Ooh. So this is it in action before we do the guide. Uh, just absolutely blowing everything up. This is with all of my main stat Paragon out. Gems out of the gear. So what, 12.5k main stat, as you will see in the guide once we get it done. Um, but absolutely just crushing T16 everywhere. Uh, so much fun to play. Look at this. How much fun is this? Og. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on, YouTube? It's Filthy, and we're back with another video. Today, we're looking at the Talrasha set. This has been buffed for Season 27. Patch 2.7.4 is live. This is the starting set for the Wizard, and it absolutely crushes T16 bounties and GR speeds. Uh, today, we're going to concentrate mostly on the T16 and bounty, uh, because I think this is potentially an absolutely fantastic start for next season. Uh, really quite strong. Lots of multipliers to get your hands on, which really will pump your damage up quite a lot. Uh, we're running this with 12.5k main stat, so no gems in the gear. We're running it with no points in Paragon. And it absolutely blams. Uh, when I put my Paragon in, uh, we can do this with only two Talrasha stacks. We can try and get even more arcane power if we want. Um, but basically, it, meters have been buffed. We can now uh, cover the screen with Meteor uh, pretty easily. And it just absolutely crushes. So uh, pretty good. Before we do jump into it though guys. Hope you enjoyed that gameplay. Uh, we will do a bit more. Thumbs up always brightens my day. Uh, but let's have a look at Tal Rasha. Uh, now we get automatic meteors on the two piece. Whenever we hit with arcane cold fire or lightning. We get a meteor of that type. Uh, we also get immunity to it. So we are quite tanky. Uh, on the four piece we get 100% extra resistances. Um, stacked up four times so that's 400% resistance I think uh, which is just you know a lot of toughness uh, and then attacks increase by 2000% for arcane cold fire and lightning uh, each stack is added individually once you get to four stacks you can then just simply maintain um, by by holding down meteor basically so they're the tal stacks so we have got fire explosive blast we have got frost nova frozen mist cold uh, and we have teleport for arcane and now we can just hold down at meteor uh, and when we teleport when we hit stuff uh, this will just refresh which is brilliant uh, on the weapon we've got lightning damage um, lightning on the meteor and then arcnaut which I don't think I think this counts as arcane we've got teleport calamity on anyway uh, but these are the skills that we're using we're going to take the crimsons so towels we're dropping the belt we're dropping the pants this is just or resource cost reduction uh, cooldown doesn't matter because on the four piece now uh, we get one second off the teleport cooldown whenever we attack with meteor we have to actually like attack but it will reduce the cooldown but we're going to take the aether walker anyway uh, so we can infinite teleport it does cost arcane power um, that is the main thing you're battling against here is arcane power usage um, but for bounties i think it's probably better to go aether walker uh, because you're not going to be able to activate an in-game. Uh, in-game for T16, there's an argument that this is better because you pretty much have it up most of the time. Uh, that's what she said. But Aether Walker, I think probably is just the more consistent choice. But if you fancy going for some in-game spam, I did use this. Uh, it does work pretty well. In the Cube Grand Vizier, we get 50% off the Arcane Power cost of the Meteor, which is why the Arcane Power barely moves. We have got uh, increased damage 400% on this. The other buffed item, the Smoldering Core, doesn't seem anywhere near as good because A, we do not get the Arcane Power uh, resource cost reduction. We don't get um, as much damage initially because you have to stack this up. So it goes up to 500%, which is higher. You have to stack it. Uh, so it seems the Grand Vizier is the way to go. Now, for the GR speeds, uh, I think we are actually using both of the uh, both of the two handers because obviously you need the extra power for the GR speeds, but because you don't need them, uh, we're going to actually just take the Talrasha offhand and go for the Aether Walker uh, for the uh, Perma Teleport. Now, the resource cost reduction for the Perma Teleport is pretty handy. Um, you know, that's realistically why we need to stack a lot of it. Uh, if it was just Meteor we were casting. We were just using in-game, uh, we wouldn't have to care so much about resource cost reduction. 
The Mempo of Twilight has now been buffed as well, so Meteor Shower is now applied to all runes. Uh, so this is why we get so many Meteors, which is really cool. And they get 400% extra damage. You have to cast the Meteors yourself to get the to get the Meteor Shower effect. Uh, but I think the damage 400% applies to all the Meteors, apparently. So lots of damage here. Rogue to make up the bonuses, and then we've got the All Guild set for more damage and more damage reduction. Stone of Jordan simply for more damage and a little bit more arcane power on the secondary, which is quite nice. Uh, I've gone for Halo of Karini just so that I don't have to swap between T16 and Bounty. This will give us 80% damage reduction uh, whenever Storm Armor electrocutes something. So that the damage reduction from the Crimsons, damage reduction from the All Goods, the massive all resist from the Talrash set uh, is makes you really tanky, uh, you know, just ludicrously tanky. But if you don't want to take it, you can go Zodiac for a little bit more cooldown reduction. Um, that really only kind of seems to benefit if you're changing the skills a little bit and trying to sneak in something like Diamond Skin Prism, uh, which will shave you a little bit off your arcane power cost, uh, and it will also. Um, Give you this 40% uh, life. Uh, we, we absolutely can use this, and it'll it'll keep your teleport cost down um, when active. I think that's the way it should work. But obviously, it's not got uh, amazing uptime. So you know, again, you can when we stick the paragon in, we can just dump all of the skills and just hold down meteor and pick all the skills uh, that go for. Resource cost reduction, basically, uh, which is which is quite fun. Uh, what else? Uh, have we done the gems? Trap for damage, Zyze for damage, Boon of the Horde for gold. Now, with wizard teleport builds, uh, unfortunately, uh, what you have to do is you have to move a little bit to activate pickup radius, uh, which is a bit of a bummer. So again, if you're not interested in the gold, because obviously we do have Echoing Nightmares for Augments next season, uh, as always these days, if gold is not important to you, by all means, pop a powerful in, do even more damage, stick an esoteric alteration gem in for even more crazy resist, uh, or maybe go for a, a gizzard gem uh, to pump your shield uh, a little bit higher. Uh, double crits, if you're going Stone of Jordan route, just match your elements. Uh, conventional elements is really high damage as well. It might well just, you know, I mean, early on, you're probably going to have a convention of elements rather than the Stone of Jordan. Uh, I don't know whether this benefits the fire and lightning cycles. It, I don't think it does. I think the meteor shower just means more meteors rather than to actually deal fire damage and lightning damage. But it is uh, interesting. We get two stacks when we attack. I think sometimes we get two, sometimes we get one. I don't know if it's bugged. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I teleported and that's why. I think the elements on your wand might actually count. Again, somebody in the comments can let me know. Um, but as I say, if you put if you if you put the paragon in, um, you can you can crush it with with two Talrasha stacks. To be fair, it may be even with COE you can you can do it. Um, but we're going we'll go, we'll take Stone of Jordan just to keep it nice and smooth and get that little bit of extra uh, damage. So tons of options basically is what I'm getting at. Uh, I tried working in Guardian set, but it doesn't really seem to be terribly worth it. Uh, you, I mean, you could do something where you took Guardians here, Guardians here. Shoulders would be open. You go onto Tal's pants. You could then do the squirts and do a shield mechanic, the double damage. Um, but like the you know the damage, <laughs> the damage is not what you need here. Um, the Nilfa's boast obviously 600% flat meteor damage. Up to 900% when you hit three or fewer enemies. Uh, meteor damage you can roll on here. Crit and meteor damage you can roll on your helm. Other than that, I've actually chosen resource cost reduction on gloves. Uh, I would like it to be higher on shoulders. I've got it on my weapon. I've actually rolled it on my offhand. You kind of want four arcane power per crit rather than three. But this is all that I had in my stash. So I would have less resource problems moving up to four arcane power with the uh, resource cost reduction as well uh, and I think that's I think that probably covers the gear uh, and the swapsies that I've been playing around with uh, skills wise you just want any cold skill here it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be frost nova if you do pick frost nova you have to pick one that does damage so that is frozen mist 
Uh, we only pop it once at the start of the rift. Same for explosive blast short fuse. It's just an instant fire skill we can cast. Um, you know, maybe maybe there's an argument that uh, magic missile with the fire uh, would be better because then you're not spending a little bit of resource if you accidentally pop it. So you could go and flag like that. I would still pop your tal stack. But it wouldn't actually cost any arcane power. So that's totally your choice. Uh, familiar Arcanaut. This gives arcane power per second, which is great. Uh, I think it activates the arcane, but I mean, the, the teleport calamity definitely does anyway. Uh, gives tons of resources, which is very nice. Teleport calamity, we just covered, and then power of the storm. Uh, take three off uh, arcane power skills, which is great. So three off your arcane power, and it activates the Karini. If you want the toughness, you don't have to have the Karini. Uh, just avoid explosions if you don't. But, you know, I just think there's, there's very little else I think we can take other than the Karini. Uh, Utility-wise, we don't need any more damage. So, yeah. Uh, Galvanizing Ward, we can do a shield 60% of our life. Obviously, if we pumped our life pool up with some Paragon points, that shield would be even thicker. Uh, which, again, would just maybe help us out. Uh, I've gone for Power Hungry, so if something's further away, we splat it for 30% more damage. Gone for audacity for the same reason within 15 yards we splat it for more damage uh astral presence seems to make sense more arcane power and more arcane power regen uh we don't really need cooldown so there doesn't seem to be any points taking evocation could take glass cannon uh for 15 percent more damage i guess maybe we could take it instead of the shield uh you know again that's a potential option Chi Death, if you want to take one, you could do, I think Unwavering Will should work, because we're not actually really moving very much, we're just teleporting. Uh, stuff doesn't last long enough for elemental exposure. Uh, so that, this is the way that we've got to set up. I'll, I'll show you just how ridiculously powerful. Uh, right, so if we activate the Arcanaut Storm Armor, hit our Fire Spell, hit our Cold Spell, activate our full Tel Stacks, which are there, uh, and then as we hold down teleport and we hold down meteor, we just basically uh, crush everything. We just have to stop to pick stuff up, which is lovely jubbly. Uh, you can get a little low on arcane power if you pop speed pylons. Uh, again, I think the long term for this is probably to maybe just use the two tal stacks and pick the diamond skin prism just to try and get a little bit more resource cost reduction. Other option is to take the follower, so the Templar, drop the cheat death uh, off the Enchantress. And she also comes with attack speed, which I'm not sure we need, because I think the, the biggest issue this build is going to have is, is resource. But, you know, as you can see, we are melting, and with four arcane power on Kirit rather than three, we should be a little better uh, on the arcane power but we don't you know if you are running low you just have to maybe maybe not teleport quite as much you know, take a little breather i guess uh, can we stand in this explosion no <laughs> no we cannot uh maybe the karini was not who knows game difficulty <laughs> yes that's the issue if you do die like that just uh restart yourself make sure you press all your tell buttons to get your four stacks because if you only get to three stacks, uh, you will not reactivate the uh, auto auto renewing mechanic. Yeah, a lot of fun to play. This is just just a dream. This is always what I've wanted for Wizard: a huge AOE, very fast T16 build uh, that we can just absolutely murder keys on, uh, which is which is very nice. Uh, I will show you the GR speed build here. Uh, I won't take this one for a run. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, this one so all we're swapping around on this and again this is very tanky we're basically getting in the smoldering core so we're dumping aether walker and the uh towels offhand we are actually dumping the crimsons uh, because we're going for the squirts so we've got the squirts all guilds uh, no crimson so one two three four five pieces of towels still with the rogue with the squirts with the mempo Smoldering Core, and then Galvanizing Ward. So put a few points into Vitality, pump this shield up. Uh, with your Storm Armor up and your shield, you should be pretty good for keeping the uh, Squirts up. 
and I think you know crushing 115s, uh, albeit with like 2.8k Paragon. Gear's not like optimized. I haven't sat here all day and played this. I've had quite a few bits and bobs on. Uh, but let's show you GR81, which is the equivalent of a T16 bounty. All right, why have I not pressed my fire button? No, I haven't pressed my call button. So this would be a four player bounty difficulty. Uh, we wouldn't quite have this much damage because we would be losing the Enchantress. Um, but I think it's safe to say that it doesn't really matter. So this is great. I can I can play this one handed. I can you know drink my beer. I can chill out. I can be fiddling with my phone, not really paying attention. Uh, this build is just absolutely ridiculous for bounties and for T16s. Um, and as I say, for Wizard, bounties have always been shit on Wizard. It's been really difficult to do. Uh, I've hated doing them on Wizard for ages. Uh, and this is just very nice. Very nice to do. And if you're doing, well, I was going to say, if you're doing bounties, you'd want the Gloves of Worship on the Follower. Of course, we don't get the follow in bounties, so bum idea, naughty, filthy. Um, but yeah, this is you know, I mean, how this does not get any more chill than this, does it? Uh, you know, I guess eventually we're running out of arcane power. Now, if we take the speed pile on, I, we will run out of arcane faster, I think. Uh, it doesn't seem to be making terribly much difference, but you know, if you, well, I mean, look how fast it comes back. You've only got to pause for a brief second if you're if you're running out, uh, and we could have the four arcane power on crit, and maybe we could do some more resource cost rolls, you know, to absolutely perfect this for the season. Let's say I wanted this to be my uh, bounty build of choice. Well, you know, maybe you'd take resource cost like everywhere. You'd take it on your amulet as well, uh, just for, for ease of use. Uh, I am really wondering what Legacy of Dreams Meteor would do for bounties. Because you wouldn't have to have any of this, um, you know, worrying about tal stacks. You'd be able to take in that helm that means that you've got like 30% no, 30% uh, re resource cost reduction if you haven't taken damage. You could stack yourself a ginormous shield. Uh, you would obviously take squirts uh, and you would have complete freedom uh, with your gear. So you'd, you'd be working in uh, blood braces from massive shield. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe on the season, we'll, we'll build out Legacy of Dreams. I'm going to play some Wizard definitely now that this is here because this is just, I mean, visually very appealing, uh, a lot of fun to play. Uh, and yeah, crunch, a lot of fun. So yeah, solo speeds. I think Wadijo is crushing like 120s with like a 2k Paragon character. Obviously, he's completely god tier of the game. I'm a potato, um, but I'm quite happy with 115 to 120 speeds uh, with a final end game character. Probably a bit behind the DH still. I don't think it's S tier simply because it doesn't use the season theme. Um, so obviously, no sanctified power on this build. Uh, and I think the only one that would actually offer you any kind of working thing for it uh, would be the uh, one that storm armor charges up and then kills something but you know i mean realistically there's not much that's gonna be surviving uh, these explosions but your speed sure that will help a little bit i guess um but it's still not going to be earth shattering if the season theme impacted this in any way uh, this probably would be the best solo casual build in the game it's it's like super strong a lot of fun Right, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I will see you all on Friday for the season launch. Uh, well, probably make a video Saturday or Sunday. Uh, I hope RNGs is kind to you. Take it easy. 